Cool. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to wait just a little bit to give people who are not on like premium Twitch a chance to join and get past the ads. Uh, so I'll, I'll give my intro and everything and start the panel in just like 10 to 15 seconds to get past that ad time. Um, but thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm excited to do, to, to do this panel today and I hope you learned something or enjoy my panel, I guess. Uh, give it like 10 more seconds. Oh, yeah, people are commenting. I'm, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, um, but I'm also going to focus on my presentation. But yeah. Yay. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. <laughs> oh, the purple hearts are so cute. OK, um, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so hi, I'm Mindy. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Lolita accessories. Uh, if you're a Lolita who has the basics down, you got your petticoat, blouse, shoes, and maybe a head bow and some wrist cuffs, but you want to step up your accessory game, then this is the panel for you. Uh, these are all things that I've experimented with or picked up from other Lolitas over the last five years that I've been in the fashion. And even if you've been in the fashion for a while, Maybe you'll still pick something up, a couple new tricks for accessorizing or changing up your cords. Uh, also, I know my example here in the first slide is like OTT suite, but I promise I will have tips for all the different substyles. Um, I'm going to briefly apologize for my slides because they are very basic, uh, because I am not a graphic designer. <laughs> um, I pulled all of these examples that I could find for this presentation, though, so it's just like jam packed with beautiful images and pictures from all these uh, several different Lolitas. Um, also, if you have any questions during the presentation, please just like write them down and save them for the end because I will save time at the end for some Q&A. Yeah, let's get started. Oop, oop, click, there we go, okay. So the first thing I wanted to briefly touch on was the idea of themes in your accessories. Uh, it really helps your cord look more cohesive if you try to pick a theme for your outfit and you choose accessories to match. So some of my common themes are stars, which you can see on the right, and or moon accessories, because I have a lot of different galaxy dresses. Uh, in this left example, you can see Avina had an Animal Crossing theme for this cord. And in the middle example, you can see all the different cloud accessories that I've collected for my Misty Sky dress. Uh, several of those were like specially uh, Special, one, special ones that I like, what's the word, custom ordered, yeah. Um, so for a cohesive wardrobe, it also helps to have common themes throughout your accessories. For instance, I really, really love pearls. Uh, so I have just collected a lot of different pearl accessories. Uh, and whenever I decide to use pearls in my cord, I just have a lot of different options to choose from. And that really helps just tie the whole look together. Um, this is my most general accessories tip, but from here on out, we're going to get pretty specific about the different accessories and how you can use and wear them in different ways. OK, so if there's one thing you take away from this talk, it should be printed tights. It's the easiest way to elevate a cord. Um, there's just something about uh, you can you can have a basic cord with like white tights, black tights. But just something about adding that little extra texture at the bottom just really elevates it. Um, these examples are all from Wistywish on Instagram. Uh, she was the one who made me realize what a difference printed tights can make in a cord. Uh, you can see that some of her cords are really simple here, but for example, this third ex example from the left is pretty simple, but just the, the printed on the print on the tights just like knocks it up a just, just a little bit more. Um, she's also how I found out about my favorite brand for tights, which is Red Maria. Red Maria is a Taobao shop and their tights are so soft and comfortable. Um, the four tights on the left of the examples here are all from Red Maria. <laughs> you can see uh, Wistie Wish is really good at tying in colors from her tights to her cord as well. Um, but she also matches the examples, matches the theme. Um, like in this example here, uh, hopefully you can see my, my mouse, but uh, you can see that her, the, the, the theme on the tights matches the theme in the dress. And similarly with this one, you've got like polka dots on the on the tights and polka dots on the dress. And I just really love how it always just, just looks so cohesive and nice. Oop, oop. 
Thanks. Okay. Uh, so Wistiwish was more um, classic or sweet looks, but you can see here that printed tights definitely work for Gothic looks as well. Um, and when I say printed tights, they can go anywhere from this like super <laughs> extravagant, like extra print with like faces on it, all the way to the, the right here, which is just like simple stripes. Um, just even like a little bit of pop of pattern on the tights or the socks can really help just, just bump up a cord and just tie all your different colors and themes together. I really like this this one in the middle as well with, with the blood splatters because you can see she's tied that in with like a more girl 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 look here. Yeah. Sorry if I'm going too fast, by the way. I'm gonna breathe. Try to slow down a little bit. You can you can take a minute to appreciate all of these beautiful cords and tights. <laughs> oh, oh by the way, I do um I, I'm like I've tagged all of the the people here at the top. Um, I try to tag all the different examples I use because there are a lot of them. But if you see anybody you like, feel free to follow them on Instagram. Okay, um, so here are some more examples of printed tights. Uh, most of these are really good examples of the tights like just perfectly matching the dress, even if they aren't necessarily the tights that came with the dress. Um, it may take time, but if you keep an eye out and like keep pictures of your main pieces on your phone, you should be able to find like the perfect set of tights that just amplifies the dress. Also a fun way to add more patterns or colors into your cord is to layer socks over tights like this example from Miss Fortune on the right here. Um, you can add like a layer like ankle socks onto tights to just add like a little ruffle around your, your ankle or if you're taller, you can wear like knees or OTKs over tights also for added warmth, which is really nice if you're in cold weather. Uh, I've done this when I visited Portland last year <laughs> as well. Um, I've also layered, I don't have an example of this, but I've also layered like see-through OTKs with like a, a pattern on them and, and see-through tights with a pattern on them over top uh, another pair of tights with like a color or a, a more like opaque tights. And that like gives you a nice different texture of it. Um, I've done this with like see-through floral uh, tights as well as like those bandage socks OTKs from Alice and the Pirates, if you know those. Um, and it just, it, the pattern just helps change up the cord and maybe helps it match the dress more or something. I, I really like doing that. Um, I also particularly like this example um, here because these tights do not, did not come with this dress, but I just feel like they just so perfectly match the colors. And they're even from different brands. I think the socks are from, OT, uh, from Alice, from Angelic Pretty and the dress is from Alice and the Pirates. Um, so yeah, just printed tights, printed socks. There's a lot of different ways to, to mix, match, mix those up and just like elevate your core just a little bit more. Okay, um, moving on for now. Um, and also uh, I will answer questions at the end. Um, so yes, please hold your questions to the end, but I will answer them then. Okay, um, so moving on, uh, print pins slash brooches. Uh, another easy way to just step up your cord is to add either enamel pins or brooches. You can put these in all sorts of different places. Uh, these are some really excellent examples here, but you'll see more examples as we go through the slides. Um, this one on the left, I just <laughs> attached these enamel pins to, to a beret, which is just, I just think it's really cute. You can add one or, or three of them as I did here. Uh, they can be a little tricky to place and you might have to play around with it a little bit. The same with your brooches on your bodice. Um, I really love this example here on the right because all of these pieces really match like the theme she's going for and it, it all just ties together really well. But you can see she's put them in all different sorts of places, which is just really cool and creative. So for instance, for examples of places, different places to put them, yeah, here Avina on the left is placed her brooches in all sorts of different places. Um, on the right, you can see she has this line of like Animal Crossing related pins on her cardigan to tie in the theme of her cord. And on this example on the left here, you can see that she's put all her uh, put all different her brooches in all different sorts of places. You can put them on your collar, on your waist, on top of the bow. You can see she has a little extra brooch here. Um, also, she did something a little different with her apron here, which is to turn it like sideways. Um, this might be a little bit tricky to pull off, but because of all the layering she has going on, I think it really works. Um, yeah, I just really love this example here from Amina because she, you can see she's got this, she's also got different sizes of brooches, like she's got a giant one here on the right, but then she's got like smaller ones up top. Um, 
and just all sorts of different places that you can add brooches and pins. Um, and there's there's a million places to get those, but yeah. Okay, St still going a little fast in this. I'll try to slow, slow down a little bit. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking fast. Okay, uh, next is waist accessories. So speaking of the waist accessories, like the apron that Avina was wearing in the last slide, um, the waist accessories are actually just the easiest way to change up your look or wear your dress in a new way. Um, these are some examples of waist chains, which is one of the simpler waist accessories you can add, but it's one of my favorites. Um, waist chains can be a little bit delicate and finicky because they can get tangled, unfortunately. <laughs> or just in my experience, like you usually have to spend a minute like untangling them and making sure they're laying the correct way when you put them on. Um, but if you don't want to deal with really tangly waist chains like this one in the middle, um, one popular trend right now is to just take a really long necklace um, and put it around your waist as an accessory. Uh, this is especially popular to do with Mate's cross necklaces, which you can see Bordeaux Eulalia, Eulalia? Um, doing here on the right. Um, but yeah, uh, I really, again, I really love waist chains. I think they're just like, just, just a, add a little, just step up your core just a little bit, add, add a little extra bling and a little extra sparkle. Um, and there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, but besides waist chains, there's also a lot of other waist accessories. Uh, one of my favorites is also um, corsets. <laughs> I know that some Lolitas don't like the look of corsets, um, especially on top of dresses, because they think they're supposed to be worn underneath them. But I think they can be really interesting if you layer them um, properly. Uh, and they can be in it, just they add, uh, again, a little bit of extra texture and like just something a little different to your cord. Um, in a couple of these examples, I'm also wearing a waist chain on top of a corset, which can be just extra OTT. Um, both, this one especially was for an, an OTT tee that I wore. Um, yeah, they just, just add, adds a little bit extra. Um, there are uh, full corsets like pictured on the left, and then there's also under bust corsets like here. Um, depending on the dress, I think either over bust or under bust corsets can work. Uh, I think that it just depends on what kind of look you're going for and like what is going on in, in this, in the chest part portion of the dress, depending on which one would work best. Um, you can also, so like this one doesn't have the straps, but these two do. Um, so there are, there are just a lot of different kinds of corsets you can play around with. Okay, so another fun waist accessory that can change not only the feel of the cord, but also the shape of the dress itself is a harness. So I first noticed Lacey Crown here wearing harnesses as an accessory, and I thought it was just like a really interesting way to add a gothic touch to an outfit. Um, harnesses work especially well with sack dresses, like the ones uh, Lacey Crown is wearing in these examples. Uh, they're a way to make the, these like super comfortable flowy dresses just a little bit more flattering in shape because I know sack dresses can be a little bit difficult to work with. Um, and yeah, but <laughs> adding a adding a corset or, or some sort of like waist accessory can just just cinch you in just a little bit to just give you more shape. Yeah. Um, so after I noticed Lacey Crown doing this, I pretty much just just stole the idea from her <laughs> and I started doing it too, like this example left. And in fact, I'm also wearing one today that I got from Listen Flavor and it's got little wings on the back. Um, so yeah, I, d I just, I like this idea, so, so I stole it from her. I don't know if she got it from someone else too, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's fun. Um, and I also noticed a bunch of other Lolitas uh, doing it as well. Um, it's just again, not this is this is not a look for everybody. Um, same with corsets; not everybody likes the look of them. But I think that they can just be a, a different, fun way to add shape to your outfit, especially for sack dresses. Okay, so belts. Uh, sometimes a really simple way to add an accessory to a cord is to add a simple belt to the waist. Um, so if you, get, if you don't like the look of corsets or harnesses, you might just want to get a, like a simple little belt to add, add, a, add something to your waist. Um, this could cinch in your waist, like this example here, or it can just add a pop of color, like this middle example. Like it's, it just, just adds a little something extra to it. And it's also an extra place to put accessories, <laughs> like this example from Spyro J here. Um, and gives you a little extra something to, to attach accessories to, like brooches or something. 
Um, so yeah, if you don't like the look of, of corsets or harnesses, you might try just adding a simple belt. Um, sometimes it can be tricky to find waist belts that really work with Alita. This, this, this is definitely like, like another, like you have to be careful with it. Um, but I think de depending on what you're doing in different belts can definitely work. Um, I mean, example of these Spyro J ones, I think those are actually just normal belts that she's like cinched tighter to, to hit her waist rather than her hips. Um, so yeah, I think you can, I think you can find them pretty easily. And um, so these are uh, like waist corsets. They're like, this, they're like the simple belts, but they're just a little bit wider. I think I was wearing one of these as an example earlier, um, but they, so, what I really like about waist corsets um, without the, the upper part or the straps is that um, they just they just they just cinch in your waist and they can make your the skirt of your dress look bigger, I think. Um, so for example, this one this example here on right with Miss Fortune, I think that just like makes her dress look a little bit poofier almost because it's cinching in so much there that it makes the poof look extra dramatic. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. Um, but maybe you don't like the look of corsets, belts, or waist chains. Um, all of those can tend to look very gothic. Um, so if your wardrobe is primarily sweet or classic, they might not work for you. So in that case, may I introduce you to vests? <laughs> uh, vests are a more classic way to add more shape to your dress. Uh, there are all different sorts of vests, but the easiest one to start with is just a simple black or brown vest. Um, I really love vests as a layer by themselves, but they also give you a new place to attach like different accessories as well. Um, I particularly like this example uh, in the middle from Miss Fortune again, um, just cause it has, it's a, it's a little bit of a different vest, right? The, the two examples on the side are just plain black vests, which are fine and like a really nice way to start if you've never worn vests before. Um, and definitely like on the example on the right, they can still add like a pop of color or a little different dimension. To, to what you're going for. Um, but this example in the middle is just like, the vest is so interesting to look at, I think. Um, so yeah, just wanted to mention vests as an option, like a more classic option. Um, but maybe you don't less like vests either. And then I also want to remind you of aprons. <laughs> um, obviously most Lolitas know about aprons, but I wanted to mention that they're basically like the sweet version of a corset. They still change the shape of your dress and they add places to attach accessories like this example on the left here. She's got little uh, bits here. Um, Miss Fortune is kind of the queen of aprons in my book. Uh, they have a lot of different aprons and they always look adorable on them. Um, I, I really like uh, this one on the left here because she's added just a little couple accessories to it and it, it, ties, it ties the look together a little bit more. Um, there's also a lot of different kinds of aprons. They can come with the bodice part or without. Uh, this one on the right that Phantasmagorical is wearing, um, it, I have that one as well. And it's actually, it's from the black ribbon. And the top part is actually removable. So you can wear it with just the, the bottom part of the apron or you can wear it on the top as well, um, with the top as well. So aprons come in, in different colors, fabrics, and with a lot of different levels of ruffles. <laughs> so this one here is more like simpler one, smaller. And then the one on the left here has a little bit more ruffles. Um, also, one of my favorite features of um, aprons is the possible addition of bonus pockets, <laughs> even if they're very small like here. Um, you, maybe you can only fit like a chapstick in them. Um, it's still like a, a lot of Alita dresses don't have pockets. So it's nice to just, just have an extra place to maybe put your phone. Um, again, this example from uh, the black ribbon on the right um, that Phantasmagorical is wearing has pretty big pockets. They are see-through, but like if you just need a place to put your phone while you're walking around, just remember to empty your pocket <laughs> before you take a picture, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's an ec extra bonus of part, part, of, um, part of aprons. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so the biggest thing to me that I wanted to mention here is all of these different waist accessories that I've mentioned, uh, corsets, waist chains, vests, aprons, they all change the shape of your dress, especially with sack dresses. Um, you can see that in the examples here. It just, it really gives the, the vest, the, the dress a whole new look. And so it's just, it's the easiest way to just change up how you're wearing dresses, especially OPs, because you can't change the sleeves or anything. Um, 
but you can add that layer on top that just changes the whole shape of the dress. Um, you can see um, this example from Kuro Frills. She's just, just added a waist thing, but I think that that has changed the whole look and feel of the outfit. Like it just makes it, makes it look a little bit more gothic and witchy in my book. Um, and then here on the right, you can see an example of me wearing this dress two very different ways. On the right is way more of a sweet look. And then on the left is more of like a, a gothic classic look with, with the vest to add in a different sh shape to it. Um, <laughs> so also a bonus part of this is if you get uncomfortable while eating, for example, you can just take off the corset or the belt and bam, you're in a super comfortable sack dress again. <laughs> um, probably take your pictures before you do this, but if you do start to get uncomfortable with something cinching your waist, which I know can get uncomfortable for people, it is removable. Although I guess if you add like a bunch of different brooches to it, it might be more difficult to remove, but it is possible. <laughs> Especially when if you're like driving back home, you can still take it off without being like, oh no, I can't be seen in public. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So, do you want to add a little decoration in the easiest way possible to your ward? <laughs> add ribbons. Uh, ribbons can be used in your hair uh, as an accessory, like you can tie it around your neck or your wrist. Um, you can also tie it around your waist as a waist tie, like Bordeaux Lalia does here. Um, I think she does this several times, and I just it also is adds a pop of color as well, um, especially in the example on the left. It adds that like white stripe that like matches her socks, which is really cool. Um, uh, you can attach them anywhere though pretty easily like this example in the middle I just like tied it to a, a necklace um, So yeah, it, ribbons are really really fun uh, you, I really love this example from Miss Fortune on the right where she's wearing it as a necklace too um, But she tied the ribbon in the back so it like adds an extra detail on the back which I just think is so creative um, I have several like larger ribbons that are that are thicker um, for like this example in the middle where I'm wearing it on the waist um, and I also have just a, a variety of colors of ribbons. I, I found that I sort of collected them. People use them as like, put, when they're putting together packaging, especially indie brands for accessories, well, they'll include them in the packaging and I'll just hang on to them. If I ever want to add a, add a ribbon to my outfit, I can usually dig through my like little pile of ribbons that I have. Um, one of the cutest examples of using ribbons though, that I actually unfortunately don't have a, an example of pictured uh, is someone braiding a ribbon through their hair? Um, I've tried to do this a couple times, and it hasn't quite worked because it's a little it's a little tricky to get it right. Um, I think it ends up like twisting and hiding in my hair frequently. I guess because my hair is a little thicker. But I think if you use it as like a third strand and then braid it as its own individual strand, I think that would work better. Um, but yeah, uh, what it is a little tricky to get right. But I think that's like the cutest example of ribbon extra usage that I've seen is just like braiding a ribbon through your hair. Um, in some of the some of the Japanese alitas I follow also, I think they go to get their hair styled at salons and they get them like braided in that like corset style on like the back or the side of their head, which is really cool. I don't know how you would do that yourself without someone to help you or like a professional, um, but it is really cool looking. And I just think, I think ribbons are kind of an, an underutilized accessory that is just really nice to add, add a pop to. Yes. Okay, next. So I really, really love overdresses. I think they're just really elegant and they can just really push your cord into OTT status. Um, Go Kishi here has so many different overdresses that are all beautiful. Um, on the right here, you can see some examples of her cords with and without. Uh, the overdress, um, so you can see how it just like just adds a little, adds an extra layer, and it it just adds it it makes it just really cool in my for, for me. Um, I really love the way that overdresses look. Um, I also really love this example, these two examples on the left here, because it, it, the one on the left, the far left, um, has a pop of color as well. So she's added like pink into it, and it, it matches her wig as well, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, I just really think it, it's a way to just push your, your core just a little bit further. Uh, Sumiko is another Lolita who has a variety of overdresses that I envy. Um, the way she layers pieces in general is always stunning. Um, she's also the self-labeled queen of lavender. Uh, so her wardrobe is full of mostly lavender and pink pieces. Um, so she's usually wearing a lavender wig 
Uh, and I think choosing a favorite color for your wardrobe is another way to make it more cohesive. Um, I have not personally done this because I like too many different colors. Um, but if you're if you're wanting if you have a color that you just you know you love, um, trying to like stick to that color most of the time I think really helps. Um, but yeah, I really love her different her different overdresses here. This one here with like extra stars on it is just so creative. Um, and I oh, this one on the right it's it's longer, but you can see it's just like billows in the wind, and it's just so cool looking. Um, I, re I really really love her overdresses. Uh, but there are also so many different styles of overdresses. Um, here are some examples of like some gothic ones. Uh, I wanted to mention that, uh, so obviously you can get overdresses that are not see-through, but I'm a big fan of the the lace and the, the see-through ones because then you can still see the print and the details of the dress through it. It, it might like obscure the print a little bit, but for example, on the right here, like you can still see the, the colors of the dress coming through. Um, and I think that's a really nice way uh, Sheer overdresses, especially, uh, are really nice. Um, I also wanted to mention overskirts uh, by themselves. So you can get a, a, an overskirt that just goes over the skirt of the dress. So if you if you have too much going on up here already, uh, you can just have the skirt. Um, I don't know if you could have an overdress that you like take like you don't wear the top part where you yeah, maybe have it dangling down as an extra thing. But I think it depends on how it's how it ties together. But yeah. Um, I love this example here too. So many good lace examples. They're so good. <laughs> oh, um, so I want. I also wanted to briefly touch on um, underdresses too, because um, I don't think I have any examples of those, but uh, you can wear an overdress as an underdress and you can also wear another Lolita, uh, like one of your dresses that's longer, has, like, has a longer skirt underneath another dress. Um, Again, I don't, I don't, it's harder to see examples of these because you don't really know what's going on under the main dress. Um, but I think a couple times I've seen people wear another dress as a blouse under one of their like JSKs, like they wore an uh, an OP under a blouse, un under a JSK as like the blouse, and then maybe as an, as an extra length on their skirt. Um, and I think that's really cool, especially if you're like not looking to buy a bunch of different blouses, but you still have a bunch of JSKs. I think wearing an OP under a JSK, it might be a little bit warm, so you might want to save this for the winter months. Uh, but I think that is a cool, like, just just a different way to wear something. And if if you think it'll work together, I think I think that's something to try. I think. Yeah. Say so, yeah, I think a lot. I think a lot of things. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of my another one of my favorite underutilized outerwear is capes and capelets. Um, so these, there's a lot of different options when it comes to these. You can wear something fuzzy for warmth, like on the left here with Gokishi, um, or you can wear something more dramatic, like what, uh, I might say this wrong, Kuroi Irohamoniji, <laughs> you're saying it right. Um, and you can also, uh, so little capelets that I'm talking about, uh, they're not quite boleros, but they're like a ruffle that you wear around your neck. Um, sometimes they're just called like neck ruffles or something like that. Uh, that's what uh, Miss Fortune here in the middle is wearing, but she she's actually put it around her waist. So that's something to consider is even though you have an accessory that's traditionally worn one way, you can consider putting it in other places. So um, yeah, that's just a different way to just a different way to wear different things. Basically, um, I for example, this isn't a good example of that, um, but you can also wear like I'm trying to think of another example. I'm blanking, but yeah. Uh, you can, I think, oh, like the, the overdresses that you wear as like an overskirt by like taking the top part down and like just having it dangle. Um, yeah, just considering different ways to wear your your accessories um, in like different places than they're traditionally worn, uh, like brooches, for example. Like most people just put brooches here, but you can definitely put them kind of like everywhere on your head, on your waist, on your overskirt or your uh, capelet. Um, but yeah, this. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> okay, so capes. Uh, capes are really fun and they can add dramatic OTT flair to a cord. Um, I particularly like the see-through one that Kuro Phils is wearing in the middle, just because again, this with it being see-through, you can still see the details of the dress. Uh, but I mean, this dramatic one on the right <laughs> from Kulane is just, just another level. Um, I would definitely, I would probably mostly save capes for like OTT events. Um, but they're, they're definitely an accessory to consider. 
Um, I just really like the way capes look. It makes you feel just so dramatic, right? Wearing a cape, am I, am I the only one? Uh, I, I really like the way capes look. Um, but I also really like capelets because they're so cute. <laughs> uh, they're, they're a wonderful addition to your wardrobe and a way to add more details to your cord, especially uh, if you want someplace to attach more accessories. Uh, so for example, here on the right, Miss Fortune has attached a couple more accessories to her capelet um, on the outside of it. Uh, and again, just a different way to wear uh, to wear something. Um, so if you if you're st struggling for ways to different ways to wear an OP, for example, adding like a capelet with different accessories on it, or like a waist accessory, uh, or waist something to cinch it in, or to change up the the look of the dress. Uh, just different ways to wear a dress, basically. Um, so yeah, let me see. Any more notes for that? No. Okay. Yeah, I also like, uh, again, with the, I really like see-through capelets because you can still see the details. Um, uh, I really love this one from Artemis Ar Ari. I don't want to say that the second one. From Artemis. Um, the way that they wear, like, just lace details. I love, I love me some lace. <laughs> okay. Other outerwear. Oh, no, sorry. Boleros. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. So, um, more outerwear basically. Uh, all of these are examples from Gokishi. Uh, these are like soft knit boleros. Um, and what I really wanted to point out here was how she's styled them differently with like extra boches and pins. Um, this can be difficult, a difficult balance to get right and it can look a little bit messy if you're not careful. So you wanna really like play around with it until you get something that looks like cohesive and right. Um, but I just really love how she puts pieces together like this. Um, it just adds so many details to the look um, and just makes it look, there's so many things for the eye to look at, right? Like there's so many little details. Um, in this main example, you can see she's got, she's got the necklace here, but she's also got a brooch here. She's got a little pin here and she's got another brooch here. Um, and, and this example here on the top right, you can see all of her brooches are in like different places, but they all match like the theme of her outfit. So they all like tie everything together. Uh, again, just just throwing out the themes are I'm I'm a big fan of themes <laughs> in outfits and in meetups. Uh, so I, I will keep pointing that out probably every time I see it. Um, just it makes the whole look look way more cohesive. But I will point out that sometimes um, even even if not like if it bleh, even if you're going if you're not going for a specific theme, um, matching all of your co your colors. I think work. I think that's what works in the example in the middle. Like these aren't necessarily all the same theme, but I think because they're the same color, I think it really works together. So now, now we're going on to other outerwear. <laughs> so we're almost done with the outerwear section. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different outerwear options, um, like coats and blazers. Uh, I, I can't really go into all of them just because there are so many different options. Definitely keep your eye out for different outerwear, especially as we get into the colder months. Um, it's just a, a just an extra layer to your outfit, basically. Um, I also just wanted to point out that they can all change the shape of your look as well. Um, they can give again on the example on the left, it, it looks me it makes me look less cinched, which is maybe not what you want, but can be more of like a cute uh, classic look if you're not looking to look like like that, <laughs> like like an hourglass. Um, but yeah, and it also gives you uh, extra places to add accessories, like this example from Miss Fortune on the right, just just like little places to add brooches and stuff. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking to expand your wardrobe. Definitely consider outerwear, especially outerwear that like matches Lolita. Um, I think I think it'd be fun. Um, sometimes people will just go with like a basic coat, but I think sometimes adding, especially if you if you're in a cold place where you're wearing Lolita like in in the cold six months out of the year, definitely get some like really cute. Lolita outerwear, Def a good way to good way to switch up your outfits. Okay, so I wanted to mention wigs, even though they're not exactly an accessory, uh, and I don't frequently use wigs, uh, but there are a few important points I wanted to bring up. Um, wigs can add a lot more volume to the top of your cord to balance out the big volume on the top. Um, sorry, on the bottom. Uh, so you can see examples here of this, especially in this middle where she's like really teased the wig to make it just huge. Um, and if you're if you're going for that really big OTT look, it's definitely a way to balance that out. Um, 
Wigs can also be easier to style sometimes because you can style them before you put them on your head and it's, so it's easier to see all of the angles of the of the shape of it. So you put the wig on like a wig head and you can style different parts of it. Um, Sporky on the left here is really, is particularly great at styling wigs. She, it's, she's, it's like a passion of hers and she has a lot of great examples of that. Um, I also wanted to point out that wigs are really, they're easier to add accessories to uh, because the of the netting on, in the wig and the texture of the wig hair. Uh, so if you attach something to a wig, it's much more likely to stay in place than it will on your natural hair, unfortunately. Um, so you're much less likely to have something move out of place <laughs> if you're attaching accessories to a wig versus your natural hair. Um, lastly, unlike your natural hair, uh, most of the time, this not all the case, if you don't want to be dyeing your hair constantly, uh, you can get a wig that just like perfectly matches the colors of your cool words. Um, not everyone wants to do this and it certainly isn't necessary for a good cord, but it can make your cord look way more color coordinated if you wear a matching wig. Um, you can see some of the examples here. Uh, they're just, the wig just like perfectly matches the, the colors in their cord and just like ties everything together. Um, Again, this not necessary. You can do whatever you want with your hair, especially your natural hair. Wear it however you want. Um, but I just, I just think it looks really cool to, for example, Kulain does this a lot, where she gets uh, a wig that just like perfectly matches her colors. She has like a variety of colored wigs here, um, and it, it just, just ties it together a little bit more. Uh, so it's an option. I wanted to mention that, but certainly not necessary if you want to just stick with your natural hair. Okay, masks. Uh, so I also wanted to briefly touch on masks, especially since they might become the new normal for at least a little while. Um, so for covering the bottom part of your face, especially for sanitary and not spreading disease reasons, uh, you um, there are a lot of different uh, cute options. So this this example on the left is from Elegy, um, and she's she's made a variety of really cute masks. Although I think most of them are sold out right now, um, but you can get black gothic one. You can just get a simple black one or a simple white one and that will match most of your looks. But I think getting ones, I have I have several cute pastel ones that I've worn um, that just, just match your cord. And I, I don't know, it's just like an extra way to add different colors to your cords. Um, I also wanted to mention though that there are some really cool OTT masks for covering your eyes. Um, one of my favorite brands for this is Hysteria Machine, uh, which is the example here. Um, they make these really cool masks for, for either your full face or your, just your eyes that they, they look blind, but you can actually see through them. So I, I can actually see through this mask, which is pretty cool. Um, Hysteria Machine also makes some amazing headpieces, some of which I'll show later. Ooh, my phone's yelling at me. Um, but yeah, just, just lots of cool options. Master, master an option, an extra accessory option if you haven't considered them. Um, bags are the easiest way to tie in the theme of your outfit, I think. Um, they're also just a really fun accessory. I wouldn't recommend getting a bunch of different bags. Uh, I've done that. It takes up a lot of space. Don't recommend. Um, but having a few ones, like really fun ones that match most of your cords um, and most of your main pieces can be a really great way to add like a statement piece to your cord. Uh, I really love this example from Serial on the left uh, with her little robot bag, just because she was going for that sort of theme. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, also on the right here, for a more OTT example, uh, Miss Fortune and I went to Pearl Land, uh, Sanrio Pearl Land, and we had our themed cords of Little Twin Stars and Gudetama, and we made Ida bags for them. <laughs> um, definitely an extra step, <laughs> not necessary at all, uh, but it definitely like drew people's eye when we were walking away from them, um, just because of all the little details to look at. Again, just like little details, places to add brooches, pins, stuff like that. Um, Eda bags are a great place for that. Um, yeah. Also like this example on the, on the top right, because uh, this was actually a, a Pokemon themed cord from Miss Fortune. It was Sylveon themed, but she also just has like a little Pokemon purse. So yeah, just, just a fun way to add details here. Okay, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So necklaces, um, here are some examples of how you can layer your necklaces. And while we wearing one like statement necklace is perfectly fine and sometimes better since a lot of necklaces can be distracting and they get tangled in each other. Uh, I do think learning to layer necklaces is definitely a skill to practice. Um, I really like starting with a choker like the one I'm wearing now. Um, 
or, or a really short necklace that just like hangs like right here above your collarbone. Uh, and then you um, can layer different ones down. Um, I wouldn't recommend more than three unless you're going for like a really OTT look and then go all out. Um, but I think like three is a good three is a good amount. And if it's just one or two, that's good too. Um, I also wanted to mention that for necklaces, you can actually like change their default length a lot of the time. Um, so example of that in the middle here, uh, this, this technically usually attaches right here, um, but I've moved that up here for a, sort of a different look. Um, and you can do this sort of thing when you're changing when you're changing the length of a necklace. So you can adjust it to basically, for most chains, I should say, you, you can adjust it to whatever length you need it to be. Um, if it doesn't have a good chain for that, uh, what you can do is to get one of, if, if, you're, if you're handy with jewelry stuff, you can get one of those little uh, circle bits and just like attach it wherever you want it to be on the chain. And then that, that gives you an extra place to hook onto your necklace. Okay. So wrist cuffs are great. They are definitely not the only option for wrist wear. Uh, one of the easiest things to do, especially for sweet looks uh, for me, is to find a chunky bead bracelet like this example here. Um, you can get these in all sorts of different colors to match the different colors of your cords. Um, also for uh, classic looks, you could get like a simple charm bracelet or just a simple pearl bracelet. Um, you could wear gloves like this example on the right that Wistu Wish is wearing. Um, to do. Also, I mentioned ribbons earlier, but I'll, I'll mention that like wrapping ribbons around your wrist uh, can be a really cute, simple addition. And you can like layer other bracelets on top of that since it'll like stick pretty close to your wrist. Um, also stacking bracelets uh, is a fun way to get like an OTT suite look. Uh, it may take a while to collect enough bracelets to stack, uh, but it can be really cool once you once you get them all, and you can even stack them on top of wrist cuffs, <laughs> like I do in this example here. Um, again, you want to get like ones that have similar colors, but sometimes having like if you're going for a rainbow OTT look, sweet look, you can just like just go all out with that. Um, I usually prefer pastel looks, so most of my uh, bracelets and stuff are more pastel colors. But yeah. Um, also, uh, for rings, uh, what I do is I have like a set of rings that I have in mind that mostly match the cord. Uh, and I try different combinations of them until I find what works best. Um, so I'll, I'll usually sit there playing with my rings for like five to 10 minutes until I fi find what I like. Um, for me, because of the size of ring that I like, uh, I usually, I'm not, I don't have an example of that today, but I'll usually wear uh, like two rings on each hand, like I'm doing in this example. I'll have one on the index finger and then one on the ring finger. Um, sometimes I can get away with, with a middle one like I'm wearing now here, uh, but it really depends on like the size of your rings. Uh, so if they're not, these are, these are a little bit close. They're, they're running into each other a little bit. And if you, if you don't want to deal with that, then, then don't do that. But um, yeah, also uh, thumb and pinky rings like this one are really cute, um, but because those fingers are like drastically different sizes than my other three fingers. I don't usually have a lot of rings that fit those, um, especially rings with like really big uh, pendants. They don't, even even if they have like an adjustable band, they usually doesn't look right on my pinky or my thumb. Um, but uh, another, obviously uh, this mostly matters if you wear a lot of rings, but sometimes just like one big ring in the center can can stand out more. Um, I, I like the examples here of Miss Fortune wearing those. Just like a big bow ring that just stands out um, can also be better than adding like a bunch of different little rings. That it just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Um, also, uh, yeah, if you're going for like a gothic look, maybe just one big gothic pendant uh, is a good example of that. Okay. So uh, nails are a great way to finish off an outfit with just a little bit extra detail. You can add them, um, you can use them to tie in the theme of your outfit or just like spread colors more through your body. Um, I also really like the look of long pointed nails like these on the top left uh, with, um, with gothic looks. Um, if you don't wanna deal with painting your nails, there are other options. Uh, so you can get stick on nails obviously which are getting better and better. Those used to be like really uncomfortable, but the like technology for stick on nails is getting better. So I don't want to discount those. Um, or you can get nail stickers, uh, which work by you like, they, they usually have really cool patterns on them and you, you stick them on the nail and then you like file off the end of them. So they'll more perfectly shape to your natural nail. Um, these don't usually last very long. 
just because of the the adhesive in them. Um, but the but if you're just wanting like a look for like one meetup, maybe that's one you want to go with. Um, another option that I'm a big fan of is these uh, silver like uh, nail uh, rings. Um, I have several different kinds of these in like silver and gold. Um, these this brand I got these from is called Arma Medusa on Etsy. Uh, and they were suggested to me actually by a local Lolita named Bingsum at a meet like last year um, sometime. And I, I don't know, they're just a really cool OTT gothic edition, I think. Okay, moving on. I will briefly touch on large headpieces by saying that there are a lot of options, both OTT and more casual like straw hats and berets. And like, this is, this is a more casual hat that I'm wearing here. Um, Switching up your headwear is the easiest way to switch up your cord, I think. So definitely consider getting a variety of different headpieces that work throughout your whole wardrobe. I mostly have uh, OTT options shown here just because they, they stand out to me a little bit more. Um, my, my com is a big fan of these Hysteria Machine headpieces, um, which I mentioned earlier. All these wing uh, headpieces here are from Hysteria Machine, but they also just have a lot of different examples of different um, different giant headpieces. Okay, so stacking head accessories is a skill. It is one that I have personally not yet mastered, but I have many fellow Lolitas who I look up to for inspiration. Um, here is Gokishi, uh, who I think has just mastered stacking headpieces. Somehow her headwear doesn't look like too much, even though there's probably at least like five to 10 pieces on her head in all of these examples. Um, I think part of this is just like collecting different, uh, a lot of different headpieces and different colors to match your different cords. Um, that'll probably take a lot of time, but if you if you want to go for that look, here is someone to look up to. Um, here are some more examples of stacking headwear from Miss Fortune. Uh, in most of these, uh, you can see exactly how she's placed one clip in front of another. Um, again, stacking headwear takes some experimentation. You'll probably, like similar with stacking rings and bracelets, you'll probably have to just get used to placing things, things on your head. Um, you, you, but there's a lot of different examples um, you can look at to see how they're combining pieces. Um, so I, I believe that we can figure it out. <laughs> um, for, for a brief example, uh, tip, I think that it helps to have different sizes of pieces. So you can put like one big piece or maybe like a couple big pieces in the back and then you can put smaller pieces around it. I think that's like the easiest easiest way to start. Um, and here are some more examples of stacking headwear including some like Gothic examples from Spyro J. Uh, I really like how in this example here, she has put together so many different things on her head. This is actually like a hat uh, with a piece on it and then she's attached so many different things to it and then she's just like surrounded it and wrapped it in cobweb. Um, this might get a little precarious but if you're going to like an OTT event definitely definitely a good way to, to, to step up your game there. Also uh, when it comes to headwear you should consider paying attention to the back of your head as well as the front. Uh, this can be harder if you're styling your own hair instead of using a wig uh, but it's okay if it ends up a little bit messy. But keep in mind that like an extra place to add accessories and really like round out the look is definitely the back of your head. Uh, this is an example from a cord I did uh, before I cut my hair. <laughs> I ended up being chosen as the cord contest winner from the brand guest. Uh, and I definitely think that this hairstyle had something to do with it because it was one of the most impressive parts of the cord even though it was on the back of it. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, uh, for OTT events especially, it helps if you have some part of your cord that is completely unique. Um, the one way to do this is to make something yourself. Uh, Kulane and Arcom is particularly known for doing this. Uh, this picture here is an example of an Usakumiya that she modified uh, for a Baby the Star Shine Bright event um, that was sea themed. So she ended up uh, making it into a mermaid and she was chosen by the Usakumiya designer as the cord contest winner. Um, if you're not able to make something yourself, which I personally am not a super crafty person, but you have an idea of what you want, um, I would suggest either uh, searching through Etsy or maybe even reaching out to local indie brands um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of crafty people in our community. Um, there's a lot of people out there who will commission your idea and create your concept. Um, 
or maybe something close to it already exists. Uh, I've have found that just like searching my idea on Etsy actually comes up with a lot of examples usually. <laughs> okay. So I covered a lot, uh, but if you have any accessory areas that you still have questions for, I know we went really fast at the end, so I, I wanted to get to our, to our questions, but I'll try to answer them now. Um, I know that the chat is a little bit delayed from me, so um, while I wait for those to come in, I'm gonna answer a few questions that I got on my Instagram. Um, so it's kelp asks good places to get fancy gloves. Uh, so my favorite pair of gloves is actually vintage. Uh, but the other place I know that you can get them is that local annual Dickens fair that happens near me. Um, of course, that's not happening this year. Uh, but I think you could get similar fancy gloves from historical or vintage shops. Uh, outside of that, it really depends on what kind you're looking for. But I think you could search Etsy or Google for like lace gloves, women's leather gloves, or even like vintage or crochet gloves. And I think you could find something that you're looking for. Uh, next, Rosie Aura asks, advice for hair slash head accessories when you don't have bangs. Okay, so I have a, <laughs> I have a lot of advice to do this, but I'll try to be brief. Um, so obviously I don't, I don't have bangs uh, and this does limit me in some ways because what bangs do is they give you more surface area on your head to, to attach things to. <laughs> So I actually do have clip-in bangs for when I really want a certain kind of look, um, but I don't use them very often. What I have found works for me is I take the hair that's around my face, I'm gonna, sorry, excuse my hat hair, uh, and I pull it straight back, that, the, the hair that like would be your bangs, and I pull it straight back and like clip it or like add a little hair tie here. Um, this might not work for you depending on your hairline um, or what your hairline looks like or your hair texture. Uh, but I found that this gives me more of a like smooth surface to work with um, and also creates surface tension to attach accessories to, especially like with bobby pins or something. Um, and you can do this if you have bangs as well. If you want to try a different look, you can just clip back your bangs. <laughs> um, uh, if I'm doing a hairstyle that has like twin tails or buns, I still leave that hair set aside to pull back um, just so it looks more smooth because I, I personally don't like the look of a middle part. Um, on me. But if you want to be extra, you could also uh, braid the hair around your forehead. I've done this a couple times. Um, I really love doing just like a simple short French braid. Uh, it takes a little bit to get where you used to. Um, but this looks really pretty and it also gives you a little, lots of little nooks and crannies to add small accessories to. Um, I have a bunch of these little like twist in pearls that you can like twist into your hair. Um, or you can add like little bobby pins with flowers on the end or jewels. Um, so for accessories, so that's what you do with, do with your hair if you don't have bangs. Um, for accessories, I really love head chains or hair accessories that have a little piece that lands on your forehead. And I think these work really well whether you have bangs or not. But um, if you don't have bangs, it's best to like pull back the hair like I described earlier so that it doesn't get tangled in the hair accessory. Um, and if you don't have or don't want to get a head chain, you can also just take a necklace and add like bobby pins to the end of it. I've done this with bracelets and with necklaces actually. And I just like bobby pinned it to my head so that the, the main part of the necklace hangs here. Uh, this this doesn't work with, with all necklaces, but again, an ex extra way to change up your accessory. Okay, and next question is tips for color matching online. Um, so my biggest tip for color matching online is to not trust stock photos, especially from Japanese Lolita brands. Uh, I can't count the number of times that I've seen something online and thought it would or wouldn't match based on the stock photo. And then I see that in person and the color is completely different. Um, for most indie brands that accessories though, um, the pictures are usually in natural light and the colors are usually pretty close to accurate. Uh, what I do sometimes, again, it depends on the lighting on your phone, is I will pull up a picture on my phone uh, and I'll hold it next to the dress that I'm considering wearing it with, uh, just to make sure the lighting, um, just make sure the lighting on your phone doesn't do anything weird that might change the color of the item. But like, I'll pull it up and I'll just like hold my phone next to the accessory so I can see. <laughs> okay, um, and Artemis Akanji also asked, favorite OTT accessory creators? So definitely Hysteria Machine, the one that I mentioned earlier. Um, I have several of their headpieces and masks. Uh, for OTT jewelry, my favorite is actually this Japanese indie brand called Mary West. Uh, they make a variety of just gorgeous necklaces. And um, they've also started making matching earrings and rings as well. So yeah, Mary West is one of my favorites. 
And my last pre-question is, what's my favorite go-to accessory shop? Um, so I actually don't have a go-to shop just because I really like to hunt for accessories that I love or like perfectly match the dress or the theme that I'm going for. Um, however, I do have a few favorite accessory shops that are my favorites for different sub styles. Uh, for sweet styles, there's this shop called Whimsy K, W-H-I-M-S-E-K-E-I, uh, -E -E that has a lot of like the chunky head bead bracelets that I talked about earlier, as well as a lot of a variety of uh, resin jewelry and her like hair clips are really cute as well. Um, when I'm looking for something really specific, there's another shop called uh, Melty Wish. Uh, she goes by underscore Liz Juice underscore on Instagram. And she has just like a fantastic set of Misty Sky jewelry as well as like Sakura and Sakura and Moon jewelry uh, that I love. And she, she makes a lot of different things that she's willing to customize to you. You just have to like to ask very nicely. Um, and she can customize it to make it match specifically what you're looking for. Uh, and then for Gothic or classic styles, I think my favorites recently have been Neant Glass and Of a Long Lost Land. Yeah. Okay, so those are my pre-recorded questions and we have like five minutes left. Uh, if we go a little bit over to ask them, ah, is Red Maria plus size friendly? Um, so I do say I have little little thick thighs and they're they're pretty good, but they're a little close. Uh, so what I usually some for some of their tights, I will usually put like cotton shorts over them to like maybe make them stay up. Um, they do uh, stretch very well, so I think that they will fit um, over your calves and thighs. But what I uh, I don't know about height. So I am five seven, and they're a little bit almost like almost too short for me. Uh, so if you're above that, or um, I guess if you're a combination of taller and bigger, it might it might be a little bit close for you. Um, I, w I did have a note about plus size tights to do. Where did I put that? Okay. Um, so uh, for plus size, uh, you can still get, um, for plus size tights, I would still say you can get like simple pattern tights as well. So even if the pattern stretches, it can still look cool and interesting. Um, and if you're too tall, uh, there's also the option of turning tights into OTKs or thigh highs and holding them up with a sock garter. Um, I personally haven't had to do this yet, um, but I have considered doing it with a couple of old angelic pretty tights. Um, I haven't done it yet though, so I don't, I, I know there are tutorials on it though, so that, that's an option as well. What's something you're scared to try on accessories? With? So something that I have struggled with is, is the headwear part uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, like stacking a bunch of OTT accessories on my head. I've tried it like once or twice and it just hasn't worked for me. Um, I don't know if I need something more to make it bigger or something, but uh, I guess that would be the most thing I'm scared of trying, I guess. Um, other than that, I'm pretty willing to experiment with different things. I, I have tried like certain pieces together and, and certain accessories in different ways and it hasn't worked. So that will happen, but definitely be willing to experiment and try your clothes in different ways. Um, any other questions? We have like three minutes left. Is that all the questions? <laughs> oh. Okay, good. I did. I wanted to make sure I left some time for questions, but if nobody has any questions, <laughs> somebody said experimentation seems to leave. Yeah, um, definitely try experimenting with your clothes um, and accessories. There's um, that's how you you try new things, um, like like putting a harness on. It's just just try it out and see if it feels if it works for you. Um, try experimenting with what you have already, and then if you, if I've given you some options for um, for new accessories to try. Uh, definitely try to find something that really fits with the rest of your wardrobe as well um, before like trying something completely new and different. Um, try finding stuff that really matches your core, your wardrobe as well because I don't want you to end up with like a bunch of accessories that don't work for most of your wardrobe. Um, somebody asked for the UL, URL for Mary West. So Mary West um, has an Instagram and on her Instagram she links to her page and there's on the page, there's a link to her URL, but the URL for it is kind of, for her shop is kind of odd. So I usually just go through her Instagram. Um, <laughs> oh, yay. There, oh, thank you for linking all of the shops. Yeah, thank you. Um, so also on Mary West has a note uh, that she, she, I used to have to, 
the only way I've ordered through her is like through Tenchi or something through a shopping service. But um, she has a note on her website now that if you do want to order from her and you're international, just like contact her and she'll make it work, I guess. Uh, so that's something she added recently. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, if there's any last, not any more questions, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the panel. I know I, I was talking a little bit fast trying to get through it all, but um, I'll post the slides in the Discord um, as well as I had like a little script with all of my notes about what I wanted to say in that. Um, oh, yay. Thank you. Somebody said they, they really liked the, the examples uh, and they appreciate it. So yay, I'm glad. I really loved looking through all of my install of the Instagrams to find all of these examples. Oh, um, I will quickly. Uh, these are all of the people that I, uh, that I got examples from. If you want to follow them, I'll leave that up for the last like minute. Um, yes. Oh, so um, I'll post the slides and my script with all like most of my notes on, on the Discord for later. Um, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you got something out of this, <laughs> whether it was like one or two new tips or like maybe a new brand or even a new Alita to follow. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll sign off now.